Welcome back to the Always Right Podcast. I am author Caritza DeLay, and this is... Jamie. Today, before we got started, we were talking about some funny things, just trying to get our lighting correct and different things like that, and, you know, dry shampoo because my hair be dirty. Um, but you look like a, a sexy librarian, or what, what did oh. we say earlier? You're like... Sultry go, librarian. Oh, sultry librarian, and it was something yes. like that. Yes. <laughs> Too bad my hubs wasn't here for lunch. <laughs> it's kind of what I did. I went for the Halloween dork, uh, and I like painted a little white out on my beard because I don't I'm, ever. You get know, I'm grace. really getting this Goonies vibe from you right now. I know it's kind of cool, isn't it? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's yeah. Cool. I mean, yeah. you're just agreeing with me, but right. Well, no, I don't agree. I feel like this is a shirt that, and I, and and I, and I don't do Halloween wear to the beach when they're on vacation in Hawaii, <laughs> but during <laughs> Halloween. Wait a minute, I'm that old dude. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> All right. You, you figured out who you are in the in the script. Okay. okay. So, so that's you know, what you've been trying to tell me. Okay. As you know from our listeners, <laughs> we typically uh talk about, you know, our experiences and some of the things with writing or we'll go over details of separation of types of writing, but today we're going to let Jamie lead the podcast, which could be scary. I'm so nervous. And we are going to talk about ISBN numbers. Um, so I'm going to let Jamie take over and tell us one, what is an ISBN number? Why do we have them? And what is the difference and all the good stuff? So take it from here. Okay. So ISBN number is an international standard book number and it's anywhere in any country. So if you go to a bookstore or you're buying on Amazon, a print book, Typically, yes, they do extend to ebooks, which we'll explain that in a minute. You have to have uh, generally a barcode, which we'll talk about that too. But there's a little number in there, like this. This book is yes, I want to use my old man dork glasses. <laughs> this is the mystery beneath Midville what Museum. Say about glasses. Do what? What are you trying to say about dork glasses? I'm literally oh. wearing glasses. Yeah, but I look a little dorkier. So this uh, for Anne McGee's book. The ISBN is 978-1-936-307-40-1. For my book, Raise Your Voice 2, The Advanced Manual, it's 978-1-936-307-29-6. And I'm talking fast, but there are there are several similar numbers in there. So if you go to your – if you got a little library, you got a book there, you can flip it over on the back. You'll see this. Sometimes it will have the price printed on the barcode. Which uh, barcodes is probably a whole other topic that we can discuss in another one. But if you if you want to sell your book in a bookstore or through Barnes and Noble online or Amazon online, you need an ISBN number. Uh, whether you are self published or through a publisher, uh, generally if you're through a publisher, they're handling it. If not, you're handling it. Now. Um, if you are just going to publish to Amazon, say you're into Kindle, they do have an ASIN. I believe that's uh, Am uh, Amazon Standard International. I'd have to look it up. <laughs> it's I took my notes <laughs> because I don't Jamie really got organized. Yeah, Amazon Standard Identification Number. I was right there. So they will provide you with a similar number, but that is just for their cataloging system for there. But if you don't um, – so if you have a Kindle book that you're putting out and then you also – if you've ever done that, you know they'll be like, do you want to turn this into prints? They will handle that. But typically uh, to identify your book, to know who the publisher is, what the, you know, what the book title is, you need that ISBN number. You cannot get it into a store – Unless you have this. Now, um, I haven't bought them for years because we buy them in like bulk, like huge since we're a publishing company. But I checked out prices today and they're pretty similar. Uh, if, if you're pushing out your own book, you can go to myidentifiers.com or isbn.org. And this is a company that's owned by Boker. And every every country has – their own. I think uh, we are Boker. I think in the UK they have Nielsen. So every different company has a company or country has a company that creates these book numbers uh, that you can buy. So I just went to the site. So again, ISBN.org or myidentifiers.com. They're both owned by Boker. And I see one ISBN is $125. So 
if you're going to self-publish, and it's probably not going to be just one book. I would spend the money. Uh, they have uh, this is actually cheaper. What I remember, ten ISBNs is two ninety five. A hundred ISBNs is what we generally bought, and we bought several of those. Five seventy five. It used to be a thousand, I think, when I started, and a thousand ISBNs. If you're a huge publisher, would be fifteen hundred. But the bottom line is, you have to have this if you want to be considered mm -hmm. legitimate. Yeah, I mean, you could print a book and go through some company. And I'm sure that Chris is going to talk about uh, different types of publishers in the future and how you get your book printed and all that. But if you don't have that number, you could probably sell at a market or at a flea market or at a book signing or a local mom and pop shop. But yeah, like a, it's almost like a trade publishing essentially when you do stuff like that. Exactly. But you know, do you want your book to be able uh, to be in libraries? Do you yeah. want to be able to go to uh, Books a Million and say, "Hey, I know this author." And they got this new book can you, out. Can you order it for me? Yeah. Exactly. Because you got to realize if it's not carried uh, in a bookstore, you can walk in and you can order it and they can look in Boker Link and they can find your book if you follow the proper channels. Because once you get your ISBN number, you also got to uh, submit it. You got to do some work yourself and go through books and print and set it up. And you definitely want to do that. It's it's a responsibility of you as an individual author or the publisher. That way, libraries can order these books. And yeah, get and, them done. And go ahead. Go ahead. No, no go, go ahead. ahead. I want to take a drink of my big water oh my bottle gosh. today. Jamie brought the huge. I'm he, thirsty. He brought the the Doctor Vox vault of water. It's like, That's because size it's matters. Like it's own water uh, tower. Yes. It's, a, it's a gallon. It's a gallon thermos. So you were saying. Well, so so you're talking about like people owning their own, <clears throat> you know, making sure you have an ISBN number. And something that people don't realize is you could get one ISBN number that is for that one publication of that that book. So like this one, my first self published one has a specific ISBN number. Um. And then when I went and went through uh, Jamie, I had a completely different one because this ISBN number is correlates to this particular one versus that one. Yeah. So you bring up a good point. So a lot of people do not do this, but when I started and the reason we had so many is if I put out raise your voice in print and I've actually had three editions of that book. So I always had to change it. Mind you, I started printing in 2004 and back then it was only a 10 digit number. Uh, now it is a 13 digit number. They added an identifier to say, hey, this is an ISBN number. So uh, mine is, of <laughs> course, 978, the three digits that they added. <clears throat> but um, I was had an ISBN for everything, for an ebook, for when I first did Kindle, until I realized I could just use theirs. But I was very, like, making sure everything was tied in to this publishing company. And Carissa, that ISBN on your, your self published, you had to pay for that, correct? Well, so yeah. when I talk about the difference of publishing companies, I can explain how um, essentially I went with a more of a self-publishing vanity company. So they had that ISBN included in your package deal, essentially. Um, so I didn't pay for it as an a la carte. I paid for it as the bundle. But it was listed on there. You get the, the ISBN. Well... So they took care of it. So, okay. So if you decided to put a book out on your own and you're like, okay, I want to go buy an ISBN. Mm -hmm. I just want to throw this out there. I don't think I would buy just one because like when we buy a- if you're writing a series. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. Because if, if in your mind you think for a moment, I might, I might write a follow-up. I would do it because there is a specific number, which I'll explain this in a minute, that explains who the publisher is is which you would set it up as yourself of course so like vendera publishing uh my actual number is nine three six three zero seven that identifies that is vendera publishing and you know what i'm gonna just hop in there everybody if you have a book on a shelf grab it because we want to look at this now these are books after 2007 I've got books i'm gonna grab my books you, you got tons of books I've got tons so of books. Well, then pick one. One of your books and read me the ISBN number off the back. Well, three of my books have a 978. <laughs> okay. And those are from me, correct? Yes. Yes. But let's see here. So the other ones, it might be because a lot of times they change or they do them in bulk. So the 978, that recognizes that the number 
is an ISBN, uh, ISBN because there are different numbers on products. <laughs> you can go to Walmart and you're going to see all kinds of numbers on okay, a product. Yeah, here's the difference. So yeah, the nine nine seven eight <laughs> uh, one is the is that an ISBN? Yeah, but the other part is for the other ones. It was four one seven, where ours are nine three six three zero seven. Like those yeah. are all the same. Well, that's a publishing number. So like like if you read the first three numbers are nine seven eight, which says hey this is an ISBN book number. Then you have a number next to it which is probably dash zero. Am I correct? Well, mine are dash one. Okay, well, then they, they've changed it because what it does, that usually recognizes the country and the language group, which would be like United States. But, of course, you know, you're filtering through these numbers so they can keep right. track and they can only produce so many before they got to go. When I bought my original ones, uh, yeah, mine's dash one. I don't know what I'm thinking. Yeah, so uh, back when I'm reading, uh, I found some pictures online just to remind me how this goes. But now that they've updated it, dash one is signifying United States. English, so we know this is an ISB number. It's produced in the U.S. and then it's followed by, and I know your books have this nine three six three zero seven, which signifies Vendera Publishing. Right, and the other one that when I self published, it only has four digits, so it's like four eight one seven. Okay, and that could be since it's early on, it was shorter because there was a was that a ten digit or thirteen digit? You going to make me count? I, I am. I, I see. I can't do axes off. Thirteen. Okay, so they just changed the way they do it. again. Yeah, so, you know, yeah, they break up their digits. the the uh, The other one was broke up by four, four, and one, where ours is three, um, one, six, two, one, probably. Well, yeah, and well, it's it's six, two, and one. Yeah. Yes. So then, the the uh, there's a number towards the end. Like I'm looking at uh, Anne McGee's book, and again, nine three six three zero seven is the publisher dash, and then there's forty. Forty signifies the information about that book. So when this is put into the system and I add it in Boker Link and Books in Print, I'm like, here's the name of the book, here is the author, here's the number of pages, blah, 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 blah. And they connect that to this ISBN number so they know that it's 40. So if I do uh, a new edition of the book, that number may change to reflect, hey, this is a second edition, this is a third edition. Well, and yeah, of course- Go ahead. You, it goes 34 and then four rivers. The next one in the series is 35. Exactly. So, and that's because I got a, my list, my computer generated list from Boker Link. Uh, the last number is kind of a, that's a computer thing. You don't have to worry about that. But the last number, I can't even remember what it's called. Uh, it's check digit or check. Some people call it a check sum. So they have this computer system where they add up all the numbers. They do a mathematical formula. And that last number, uh, they added up and it equals a single digit. That uh, a publisher or printer, when they print it on the book, they don't screw it up. I mean, what if they did 936308 instead of 307? That checksum, that last number would be like, hold the door. Uh, 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 there's an error. Uh, there's something wrong with this. And then, of course, you can have it fixed. So that's just a way for a computer when they're reading this to know that, okay, this is the correct uh, number for this book. And there's no uh, there's no uh, mathematical errors in it. So uh, that is an ISBN number. But you'll notice on the back you have a barcode. So and sometimes a barcode will have the pricing. Uh, I generally don't do – Pricing, unless we're pushing to big bookstores, because we may fluctuate. We may play around with the pricing. You know, I may drop something to twenty four ninety five or something like that. But the barcode uh, is just a series of numbers, and you have to get those made too. Luckily, since we use Lightning Source uh, Printing, which is owned by Ingram, they take care of that for me. Uh, otherwise, if you're a self publisher. There are many websites. I'm not even. I can't even think of one off the top of my head. You don't have to worry about it. You just go online. You get your ISBN number, and you can type in barcode creator. And there are many, many services. You can even do this through Fiverr. I've seen it through Fiverr before. And you will give them your ISBN number, and they will generate a barcode that locks into the metadata uh, of the ISBN and your book. And then, boom! Uh, when you're having your book cover design, you have that printed on there, and you're ready to go. It can be scanned anywhere. People can order it through, uh, again, through Books a Million or whatever, and you have – your book is actually legit. Please do that. I mean I remember years ago I'd go to like a, a fair and there would be a, a local author and I would buy books uh, on many different subjects. You know, I love new age stuff and I love fiction. No barcodes, no ISBN because they would go and find a printer and do like 100 copies and 
you know, pay off the butt to have these made and try to make a few bucks off each book. But that's the only way they could do it. They couldn't get it into a local bookstore. So it is very, very important that you do get your own ISBN numbers or let us handle it for you. <laughs> right, right. So question. So with the ISBN, um, say, say when I go to redo Crystal Gate um, and I want to do like a, like a whole new cover series because I know like Stephanie Meyer, she had her original Twilight series. Then she had a whole nother series <laughs> like the same series, but a whole nother look to them. Do you yep. have to get a separate ISBN for those yeah. new covers? Yeah. I mean, even like we got your books out in hardback and we have to go paperback. That has to be a separate ISBN number. Uh, if, if you do a new cover, if you do a new interior design, you're doing new layouts. I would personally, I, I know people who they have submitted to their printing company and they don't really, they're not going to check that. So I could be like, Hey, I'm going to make revisions to my cover and I could, legitimately kind of get by with it but then it gets kind of wonky and you type it in and you see or if you search for the isb and we're like i don't know which one to choose and you know this one says it's out of print is this a new a new edition so you're going to copyright it again so you know if your book came out in you know 2010 or 2012 and then you put one out in 2023 and you're updating that maybe you change it from a six by nine to a five by eight that's all important information so yeah that's why, especially if you're going to self-publish, you got to have those numbers. So, and if yeah. you can, even if you're only going to put out a, a small series and you think I may do more of this or do different versions, I want to do an ebook, I want to do this, you might want to pay for a hundred. I know it's 575 bucks, but that's a hundred ISBNs for almost 600 compared to 10 ISBNs for what did I say? Less than 300. Two something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So why not spend the money and have And you them? said they can go to ISBN.org. <laughs> And, yeah. uh, and then my .org or myidentifiers.com. Okay. Either. And it's just, they, I don't know why they do that. Uh, I mean, you can go through and see all the different services they have, but they're both owned by Boker. So you yeah. can buy ISPNs off of each one. Uh, and then you have to, of course, go to books and prints. And that, that'll be a whole other subject that we will set up on explaining, like how to uh, library catalog your books so that, you know, libraries can purchase it, um, you know, and it can be available anywhere. And if you don't do that, if you don't go take your time and add the metadata yourself, libraries are not going to look for this. They're not going to be able to find it. So, right. and that can but, be a great source. There's absolutely something that um, I may just like touch again on it in the next episode, but whenever I... Whenever I published and I went to the library, the library, based on the way their grant is written sometimes, they can only purchase books from particular printers yep. with the ISBN number as long as it's in, in certain type. They won't they won't even purchase certain types of ISBN numbers. Of yeah, library. well, I mean, it depends on who you're, you're going through because the two like biggest book distributors are like Baker and Taylor, which actually... I used to use uh, LSI in the beginning, but now uh, LSI is owned by Ingram content now. So they're, they're the same thing. They distribute. In fact, they, uh, since they own lightning source printing, there have been times they've distributed books to Baker and Taylor to mm -hmm. distribute to libraries. It's just a whole right. big system. But I know years ago, Baker and Taylor kind of got out of really pushing the whole sale of books. I, I, I think I don't quote me on this. I'd have to look it up. But uh, and this is not even important for you. you this will be taken care of if you go through something like, uh, well, of course, you can't go through Lightning Source now, but you could go through Ingram Spark, which is like a subsidiary of Lightning Source Printing, which is owned again by Ingram, which is the biggest distributor in the United States right now. And I believe they also have a company in Europe or somewhere like that. So, you know, we have many channels to distribute as a self-publisher. You're not going to have to worry about that if you're going that route. You're probably going to go Amazon anyway, you know, yep. but if you want to go beyond that so that you're in Barnes & Noble, because some people do, still do own a Nook, you know, I know it's far and few between that we hear about Nook. I don't even know if Kobo exists anymore. It's, it's been a while. What is that foreign word? Yeah. Yeah. What is that? And everyone's like, Nook books, man, it's going to blow up because we were really pumping them out. But Whew, the Amazon nook, just took is, the is the Nook the one that looks like like a digital piece of paper? Essentially, it's like very yeah. Matte. But you know what? But a Kindle is like that now too. They yeah, got I, the... yeah, yeah. So I well, I've seen people with both Nooks and Kindles. Um, as far as for reading, especially where I work with the front desk coordinators, 
a lot of them will have sometimes they always have and I'm, I'm telling you right now most of the girls that i work with read paper copies yeah they like the book in their hand but a few and far between i'll see some of them have just like a book on that's only available on an ebook and they have those um those versions well a lot of, I've, I've lot of authors that, i have met authors that only do the ebook versions hey back when uh daniel middleton from seven lm press uh, or from uh, scribe freelance was part of seven lm press and helping me with that we considered at one time saying why don't we drop off print uh, i still love print but we know how kindle exploded and really the print industry went down i mean there no. just weren't as many sales of course, a lot of people are turning to e-readers, especially the ones that look like paper. And uh, I prefer – I have a, a Kindle, and it looks like paper, and I prefer mm – -hmm. you can you can do what we're talking about doing with Canvas. You can flip it to a black screen and have all white writing or a white screen with black writing, and it's easier on your eyes. You can have mm -hmm. it on the beach, and if, mm -hmm. if you're an avid reader and you consume – uh, is it? Do you want to carry five books out on the beach, or do you want to have mm -hmm. a little Amazon reader and you can go? You can flip through books if you get tired. You're like I want to move to, to this other one. It's like watching yeah. uh, uh, Netflix. I'll jump from series to series, and I'll do that with books too. Yeah, and I, yeah, I, I tend to. I like to, and this is we've talked about this in the organization part about being more digital versus paper. But there are certain things I have to read on paper because I feel like the print itself is too small, or what I'm consuming, I need to highlight. And I just, I need to do it, print it off. And then, but then some things I can do digitally, you know, I've only read a handful of books on with an ebook. Yeah. No, I, like, uh, I'm just like you, I, I, I've went through so many highlighters and books. It's just my brain, especially if I'm reading nonfiction, I'm really want to consume a subject. And that's what I did back when I was, you know, working on creating my first ebook, just reading, reading. And my wife's like, oh, my gosh, do you highlight every line? I'm like, just the important ones. Sometimes. <laughs> yes. <Jeez. laughs> yes. Like, well, can't trade that book in. <laughs> but uh, there you go. You you definitely, if you want to be considered a legitimate uh, author, whether you're self-publishing or, um, or going through a, a company, you got to have an ISBN. So it boils down to, do you want to do all this on your own? And if you do, we'll teach you the stuff. Or do you want a publisher like Vendera Publishing? to help handle it for you. And in that case, we've already got it taken care of. You know, we have the ISBN, mm -hmm. we know how to set it up in books and prints and all of that. Yeah. So, I mean, that, I mean, that's pretty, it's, it's kind of like one of those dry topics that you feel like this is going to be a lecture and oh my gosh, your whole, your whole video screen like shook. I know it's cause it's too long. I could feel it hit it, but it's between, I didn't shave my beard. So I keep rubbing my face. It makes my beard wet and it's getting to my lips, but I'm thirsty. Oh my gosh, you just need to have to get one of those big bendy straws. Oh, yes. Oh no, I got a better idea. I'll get one of those like beer hats that just have two water bottles, Aquafina. You know what? That would probably be fitting. Just have it hooked up to your, your headset. Yeah, and I'll be like, I'll just be sipping all the time. You know, then you're, you'd be like, oh my yeah. gosh, would you go back to banging the, this? <laughs> so. Oh, so for the people who've been listening, we've dropped several episodes now. We're on YouTube. We've got today, one of them officially dropped today on the writer's block, which Go on there, subscribe, but also go over to Spotify because on Spotify, I've loaded a little poll where you can choose, are you a believer in writer's block or are you a believer in Jamie's uh, imaginary world of, you know, being bored? It's not so imaginary. Can, I'm bored. Yeah, you can literally choose Team Carissa or Team Jamie on that one. So go to Spotify. You can get on there and take the poll. And then in the future, we'll see what you guys are saying and uh, let you know what the, the consensus is. So far, I I'm winning. I appreciate it. I forgot to contact my big old email list and tell them to go there and click my name. So we talked about wow. that. Wow. I think that's I, that's like cheating, isn't it? Like just like you kind of want you – no, know, they have to go listen on Spotify. Well, it's like all those, polls. hey, I'm up I'm up to be the tattoo artist of the year in this magazine. You just got to vote for me every day on Facebook. Oh, so. there's a, there's a, speaking of tattoos, there's a tattoo artist on Facebook that – I don't know. I'm not, I am not a God when it comes to tattooing by any means. You say that, but I've got some amazing tattoos from you. Thank you. Yes. I mean, Especially I love that my branding one, that br one I did with, oh, that yes. was the VNS. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I love it. I love it. Love it. But you know, there is a tattoo artist on there who thinks he's, um, ink master, like <laughs> quality. 
And it, it, everything looks the same. I'm just, I just get so frustrated sometimes. I'm Listen, like, it's the same. I, there's, a, there's a guy around here. It's the same thing. And I'm like, he's like, I won a contest at the Drunken Bikers Association of Blind Tattoo Artists. And I'm like, <laughs> dude, I would not let this guy touch me. He could pay me $10,000. It would not let him ink me. So mm. I haven't gotten a tattoo since I've seen you. Uh, mm. Now, Scott. Now that I've opened my space. Here I just in need to get down to Florida. Florida. You'd be like, listen, tell the wife we've got to go get tattoos. Yeah, Doesn't she's, she want one? She's wanting a gazillion of them. Yes. So this is all the reason. Like, go on vacation just for tattoos. Yes. Okay. All right. So here we've gone off topic again. Squirrels. It's fine. Yeah. But... I'm rubbing off on you. I, I do want to end with, we do have, I don't think I got it in here. I, no, yeah, I do. 11 Simple Steps. It's a Vendera publishing book. We actually cover how to go through, buy your ISBN, set it up, add to books and print so everything is legitimate and your own points. So uh, if you do need a guide, just go to VenderaPublishing.com and grab a copy of 11 Simple Steps. It walks you right through it. Yep. All right. Well, thank you for listening, and we will talk to you next time. But if you have questions in the meantime or comments you want to make, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube. You can make comments there. Go on our socials. You can make comments there. Or you can directly message us through email at always right. That's A L L. I heard that. Mm. A L L ways right at gmail. Well, always right podcast at gmail.com. You're that's distracting me <laughs> with your elbows. All right. All right. I'm finishing this podcast until next time. Thank you for listening. I'm Thank author you. Carissa DeLay, and this is Jimmy Okay. Later, guys.